my name is Paul Fireman, and I'm the, uh, can you everyone hear me? I'm the president of Vivo, and Spike is a co-founder um, of Vivo, and um, we basically are here to introduce you, you know, our new product that, um, that actually makes streaming live video easy. So we think we have an improved method of live sharing video through the web, and um, the key to our success is going to be how easy it is. Um, I think some of this has already been said, so I'm going to kind of pop through this, but um, we have worked with a lot of high-profile organizations. Um, our product launched um, less than six months ago, um, but we were very fortunate to unveil it at the Consumer Electronics Association meeting in January in Vegas, and um, it's been um, sampled by a lot of um, organizations. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some things that other folks here haven't really talked about, but I think it's worth getting into, which is um, what trends are happening kind of for all of our usage. And, you know, this, this conference is all about that. I mean, how blogging and how um, social media has really reshaped um, government. But there's been major growth in, um, through social media, through all demographics. Maybe, I don't know if everyone here knows, but the fastest growing demographic group in Facebook is women 55 plus. Um, younger demographics now have over 75% penetration um, on Facebook. Also, Twitter has been um, reshaping the way people are using media because of the immediacy. And um, that immediacy, I think, is really um, you know, why we exist and why Vivo kind of came to be is that we know that there is a need to show things you know, as they're happening in real time and giving people an opportunity to be able to interact with the media while that's um, taking place. And so since consumers are looking for this, we feel that right now the missing link is something that's easy enough that it can be, that everybody can do it. Um, in terms of government, because that was the bigger umbrella of this whole talk, um, transparency and strategic use of live video, video is really changing um, the way government's working. Um, these social media tools that I was just talking about also are um, allowing constituents to engage directly with um, government, whether it's through Yinscam and being able to send the pothole to their city councilman, or whether it's the city council meeting being broadcast live to a community. Um, also, interest groups can self-broadcast events and create new media outlets that they actually control. And I think this is like really at the root of what I'm most excited about with Vivo. Um, it's happening. You know, the weekly radio address of the president <laughs> is now being streamed live. And um, we basically wanted to say, hey, you know, if this can happen on a large scale in Washington, D.C., how can we make it happen on a small scale for a local community group in, um, across the country? Um, this is some pictures of our platform. Um, it um, allows people to ask questions. As you can see here at the bottom of the screen, there's a Q&A form. Um, this is another example of someone who actually chose not to have questions because sometimes in some formats, the audience might not be able, they might not be able to handle in, inbound questions during the procedures, so we actually have some applications of that. Um, Vivo is do-it-yourself. It's very low cost, and it's entirely web-based, so, um, and we think that is also critical for the, for the success of our, of our project. Um, in terms of the ease of use, um, one of the things that's really important is that people can use their existing cameras, their existing um, computers and basically make it all work. Um, there is no software to install for either the viewer or the broadcaster. And um, anyone can start a view an event. It's, we worked very hard at creating a very user-friendly interface and we created a one-click broadcaster. Um, this is a view of what the broadcaster is when you go into actually stream live. You'll get to see the preview of what's actually in front of you and you'll get a button here that basically allows you to say start broadcast. Um, in this instance, the, um, the, the auto detection of the, um, within Vivo kind of set the bandwidth at that broadband 2 setting. Um, if you had a scenario where you needed to set mics or do other things manually, you can do that. But most people we've found don't even understand kind of what's going on on that front. So we just wanted to have an ability to be able to click once and go. Um, but it's also more than just a media player. Um, it, it, we also allow people to chat, have Q&A, and, um, and also to um, be able to insert PowerPoint presentations or other kinds of material while the video is streaming. 
Um, so in this example, there's a lot going on here, but you can see there's a chat that could go on up above. There's a there's the live video happening, and there is the uh, shocks of the global economy um, down below in the PowerPoint presentation. Um, we also think it's incredibly important to build audiences for your streams. So we took a look at the social media that people are using, and we integrated with Twitter, but also with people's email clients to be able to set up advance notices of the fact that there's a particular stream that's going on, and we built that into our platform. Um, the other thing that's critical is that Vivo automatically archives your event. And, um, and one of the other things that um, is that that actually can happen is having search the searchability of that video, and it's something we were actually talking to some other folks earlier about today. But um, I think that's another point that um, that is important: is how do people after the event happens, you miss it, can you go back and watch it? Can you find elements of those different tapes that are important to you? And that's all built in. Here's some other examples. Um, this is actually an example of a transcript that's actually been loaded and showing um, the queue time of the archive video and as it syncs up. So you want to search. In this particular video, it was all about um, immigration reform. So you want to search for guest worker, put in that term, you can search guest worker, and it pops up in the transcript. Um, in summary, Vivo is really bringing live ma video to the masses. We're easy to use. We really feel we're a super powerful platform. And I want to invite everybody to come to VivoLive.com and check it out, because Vivo is really designed for everybody, anybody with a video camera and an a internet connection who wants to stream live to be able to stream live. Thank you. Spike. You think that? Yeah, a Q &A. Okay, very good. And folks, just so you get the two, um, you know, with what Brad, Priya, and Paul are saying, you have the opportunity to go beyond to be able to embed information, to be able to get information. So you can actually watch a council meeting, type in Peduto, type in tree, and then see five different videos where I've been talking about trees. Uh, you can then use that to blog. You can use it to hold the people accountable. You can use it for a lot of different ways without having to watch three hours of council meetings. With what Paul's talking about, now community groups have the ability. And what government can do, what you should be asking your governments to do, because I'm certainly going to be pushing it for Pittsburgh, we should have a channel on our webpage so that you can go on it and you can see Tuesday night Beachview Merchants Association meeting. And you can watch that. Or Thursday at 7 p.m., Shayside Action Coalition. You can then click on to see what their agenda is. Instead of just having a list of all the organizations that are community-based in your city and having maybe a phone number or a web page, you can actually be at the meetings. And you can be at the meetings from being at home. And you can interact in the meetings. Why isn't anybody asking about parking? Don't they know I can't ever park around there and be able to be right at those meetings all throughout your city? Um, it, it takes it in a completely different direction, not just the planning commission, the zoning board, and the city council but all the way down to what's happening on your street. And um, it's all available right now. I mean, it's all there. Uh, we just have to turn the on switch on.